Good morning, Love and Hope, and all those that may be watching. Good morning. Good morning, Body of Christ. As we prepare for our morning service, just let our hearts and minds just think on the song that's playing. Just know that it is God that is keeping us. It is God that has brought us thus far. And just listen to the song. Meditate on it. Let it sink into our hearts this morning. That he is the one that is keeping us now, has kept us in the past, and he will keep us in the future. Amen. So I'll probably, again, get out of the screen and just let the song play for a while, and I'll be back with you shortly. Amen. I'm 
nada. Amen. 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 We're going to begin our service with prayer. And I know that you maybe can't really say how you feel or just wave your hand or make a comment or something but all i can say about through in here is like um like wow i mean history is in the making what has been going on has been earth-shaking. But we know that we know that we know that this is God. Churches from all over the world are coming together, praying, crying, repenting. And I know that the change does start with the church we cannot expect those that don't know christ not followers of christ because christ is the way but it's not like a pet um religion you know like well we're the only ones right this or that, that. Christ, because he talks and have taught us to love god and to love one another. And the Christians, we're the ones that have to do that. Yes, we know there are other people that may not name themselves as Christians that love people. I'm not saying they don't, they work, they help. But I'm talking about right down at the very root, right down where when you wanna be mean, right down when you wanna do the wrong thing. Christ has commanded us to do the right thing. And that is to love. And that is to continue to love. So again, like I said this morning, I am feeling some kind of way, been feeling some kind of way um, for a while now. And it's just everything that's going on and, and things that are being added on. But I can say I am persuaded that neither life nor death nor anything above or below will persuade me to separate myself from the love of God. And I thank him as that song, thank him for his grace. The grace is just not unmerited favor. Grace is the enabling power, the anointing of God that rests on us to keep going, to keep loving, to keep reaching out to help others, to show people that love, not hate, will break down the barriers. Love will cover a multitude of sin. Love is really the key. And that is the message of the gospel. And I'm saying it's part of the message of the gospel because we know the, the good news is that um, while we were low down, dirty and rotten and 
didn't have a leg to stand on, God sent his son that we could be free. And the only reason we are free is because of him. Not because of anything I did or I'm so good, I walk it out so perfectly, is what Christ did for us. So we all have that opportunity. So again, I'm spilling some kind of wow, you know, just, and I have limited myself as far as, you know, how much news I'm watching and different things like that. Um, I'm speaking to uh, the body of Christ this morning, as well as love and hope. We all have to examine ourselves and ask God, what would he have me to do? Each of us, every single one under the sound of my voice can do something to help the situation. Not burn down buildings, not break out windows. It's wonderful to protest and it's been marvelous to see of uh, cultures of all kinds coming across, banding together. But then after all of the crowd and, 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 and the mass of people disappear, are we asking the, are we asking God? Are we asking each other, what can I do to help make a change towards racism? inequality, social justice. What can I do personally? Amen, amen. So Lord, we come to you this morning. We come broken. We come with a humble heart. We come seeking your face and asking as we pray to you, the God of our hope, the God of our salvation, the God who sent his son, the God that gives us peace in the midst of chaos, the God that is our rock and our shield, the God that is our strong tower, the God that is our comforter, the God that is our helper, we come to you this morning and we pour out our heart to you, Lord God. We're asking and looking to you, Lord God, to help us, to heal us, to strengthen us, Lord God. Lord, our land, need a healing. We've been praying Chronicles 714. Just about everyone I've known have quoted that scripture down through the last couple of months like never before. We need a healing in our land. But Lord, we know it's not the land. That's just a figure of speech. We need a healing in our heart. We need a change in our thinking. Repentance we need. But repentance is not crying and sobbing and wailing. Repentance is a change in our thinking, a change in uh, and going a different direction and doing things differently. 180 degrees to turn from what we were thinking and being open. Lord, open our hearts to everyone. Open our ears that we're going to listen to everyone, black, white, people of color. We're the ones that really have been on the front lines that's been hurting for years and decades, Lord God. But we don't wanna be so selfish that we can't listen and hear what you are saying mainly to the church because you're speaking to the church you're speaking to the whole world but you're speaking to the body of christ 
So I pray this morning, Lord God, that your spirit, that the spirit of the living God that's real, the spirit of the living God that raised Jesus from the dead would just go out searching, touching, lifting, encouraging, and speaking. And then we would have open ears to hear. And we will say yes to your will, Lord God. Yes to what you want us to do. Lord God. So we pray for those that have lost loved ones during this COVID uh, pandemic. The families, the families, Lord, these are not numbers. These are people that are hurting, that are grieving, that, are, that have sorrow. And then now we're experiencing another crisis. And even that is out of hurt and pain. Even what we're seeing is from being broken and hurt and tired and, and, and just, just don't, you know, sort of somehow at the, at the it's what's in. And this is why they may be acting out. There's never going to be an excuse. But God, I know that you see and that you know the hearts of every single man, woman, child, every single heart. You know their heart. You know saved, unsaved, every heart. And you love each and every one of us. And we thank you for that this morning, Lord God. We thank you for your amazing grace that you haven't just said, okay, this is over. Like when the flood came, oh, this is done. I'm done with this. But each and every day you give us another chance to go out and love, to go out and be peacemakers, to go out and to be your hands, to go out and bring healing everywhere we go. We pray for those that are sick. We know that you yet heal. We continue to lift up our sister Maria. We're standing with her. We pray for our sister Benny and, and pastor myself and, and others that have ailments and various things going on each and every person God sees and all he wants us to do to come to him and even in our pain and hurt physical emotional spiritual he'll bring comfort to us he'll give us comfort I'm not saying it'll go away but he'll give us comfort when we come to him and lean on him we pray for families this morning. We pray for restoration, reconciliation, honesty, integrity, truth. Let it reign in our hearts individually. Let it reign in our families. Let it be shed abroad, understanding. Let us reach out beyond ourselves to see the needs of others. We know that you'll take care of us, Lord God. So we do thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor. We humble ourselves in your sight, Lord. We're praying to you and praying for us and ourselves, Lord God, that at this hour, we will be the church that we will be the church of the living God, the church that you're calling for in this hour, that we will rise up and be a light on a hill. Help us today, Lord God. Let us lay aside every weight, every sin, every selfish motive, 
every me thing and let it be a we thing, a us thing. What would you have us to do in this hour? So we thank you and we give you praise. Amen and amen and amen. The pastor is going to come as he prepare um, your hearts for the word. Be open. Be willing to say, Lord, whatever your word say is right. Not what I think is right. Not what I want to do is right. But, you know, on and on. Lord, your word is right. Your word is true. So, Lord, help us to open our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Good morning again. Elder Ross have said quite a bit this morning. And I'm sure she do feel some kind of way, as I feel some kind of way. And I'm sure a lot of people is feeling a lot of different ways. But this is the day the Lord has made, and we will be glad in it. These are the times that try men's souls. These are the times that kind of allow us to go to God and talk to God. Just talk to him. We may not hear what he's saying at different times, but talking to him makes a difference. There is some comfort in talking to God if we sit down sometime and just meditate on what's going on in our lives. We can't say why this is happening or why that's happening a lot of times. But as Ella Ross was, was talking and praying, I was sitting there and I was listening. And my mind went back years, years, all the way back to around 1955. Yes, 1955. I think I was about 16 years old, 15 to 16 years old. And I was in Selma, Alabama. That's where I was born and raised. And I remember the bus boycott. And it changed. That was a change in the United States. I don't know about other countries, but it seemed as if people got really mad with each other. And things changed. That was kind of frightening as a 17 year old in the South at that time. And around the same time, not too long, that was the Emmett Till killing. I was in Alabama at the time. I was in Selma. I wasn't 100 to 150 miles from Mississippi where that happened. That was one of the most frightening times in my life as a kid. That have never left my mind. Down through the years, it would come up, and I would think about it. 
and would always say, it could have been me. I hear people saying now, it could be me, it could have been me, it could have been me. And they are right. This time, it's a little bit different. Because the whole world, the whole world this time is involved. And I see why, for God so loved the world, meaning everybody. I heard a young lady talk about that four or five, maybe six years ago about God love people in other countries like he do us because he's creator of mankind and he is so he loved everybody that was hard for people to get I really believe that God loved everybody God loved you God loved me And he love us the same. He don't pick and choose who he love. He loves us the same. And I'm glad about that because I know he loved me. Do you know God love you this morning? I don't care who you are. I don't care what you've done. It makes no difference with God. God can forgive you for everything that you've done wrong at one time. At one time. Sometimes it takes us 10 years to forgive somebody for just cussing us, saying a bad word to us or treating us wrong. We look at what's going on the rights. It's nothing new. It's nothing new. I said it happened before. Did you? Did you go through an epidemic before? I did. And and this stuff is coming back little by little by little. The tuberculosis epidemic in the, I believe it was the early 40s. I went through that as a kid. I was ignorant to a lot of it, but I remember taking shots I remember a lot from back during that time. It's a lot I don't talk about. Because really, when I look around, there is no one to sit down and say to me much. Remember when? Remember this? It's a couple of guys that we talk every now and then. I'm just talking. But I just want you to know that you are going through something at this time that you will never forget. The children, they will think about why did we had a mask on. They don't want it on. Do you? I don't. Let me tell you, it's God's grace that's keeping us. And deep in your heart, you know that. But your mind can tell you something else. But we can't allow nothing to separate us from the love of God. Nothing. 
just want to say a few words this morning. Uh, and then I'm going to let Ella Roz, I've been kind of wrestling if they want to say with a scripture out of Revelation this morning. And I'm going to ask Ella Roz when I say my few words this morning to sit here and read this to the church. To the church. Because I believe God is speaking to the church too. To the church. God is speaking to the church and to pastors that will listen. These are the last days. Some is not going to listen. And some want to listen, but it's hard to listen because of what's going on around us. I just want to say a few words. Moses. You've read the story of Moses. A lot of people know about Moses. He taught Joshua. And then Joshua had to do work. I'm having a problem. I might have touched something. So sorry, we're having trouble playing the video. I don't think I touched nothing. Yeah. And I don't know. There's nothing I can do about it. It may be the connection. Okay. I can end it and just start it again. Do it. You on? You on? Okay. <laughs> Don't worry about it. As I was saying, and I'm gonna do this. In fact, I'm gonna let El Arad read the scripture now. Do it. Uh, the one to the Ephesian church. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to ha have her to read that now. But I want you to listen to this and then I'm going to come back. Amen. Amen. Uh, it, I'm reading out of Revelations, the second verse. And I am using the Life Application Bible. And the heading is kind of interesting. It says the loveless church. Write a letter to the leader of the church at Ephesus and tell him this. I write to inform you of a message from him who walks among the churches and hold their leader in his right hand. He says to you, I know how many good things you are doing. I have watched your hard work and your patience. I know you don't tolerate sin among your members and you have carefully examined the claim of those who say they are apostles, but aren't. You have found out how they lie. You have patiently suffered for me without quitting. Yet, there is one thing wrong. You don't love me. I'll say it again. All that good stuff, all the things you're doing, I'll say it again. 
yet there is one thing wrong. You don't love me as at first. I think about those times of your first love. How different now? You remember when you first got saved? I'm not preaching. Come and here. turn back to me again. And work as you did before. It was a joy. Excitement. To do the work of the Lord. And to love on him. To pray and to sing and to talk about him. It says, and turn back to me again and work as you did before or else I will come and remove your candlestick from its place among the churches. But there is this about you that is good. You hate the deeds of the Lysitianists, the Nicolaitans just as I did. That's good. That's good. Amen. Amen. It's a love thing, church. No. It's, it's a love thing with you and God, church. <laughs> now, that's for us. Love and hope. I want you to get your Bible. If you got a life application, I want you to get your life application. And I want you to read it. Read the footnotes. Then ask God to speak to you concerning that matter. One Bible. I believe it's the king said, I but I have something against you. If you are in a place this morning that you have left your first love, if you this morning realize that God have called you to do something and you're sitting on it and you didn't do it before this epidemic get ready to do it prepare yourself to do it God want us back. Remember last week, God want us back. Moses left his homeland and went into the desert somewhere. And God got ready. He wanted to communicate with him. He wanted to have a conversation with him. And he went where he was and he talked to him. Moses had all kind of excuses. <laughs> I got to get this together. I got it today. I got to get this together. I got, well, we have had time to get it together. God want a conversation with each and every one of us. God want to conversate with each one of us. God want a relationship. If you didn't have one, you have time or you had time to build 
a relationship with God. Build a relationship with God. God want us, and as I said last week, he want us back. Because some have left the faith. Some have walked away from the faith. I'm not talking about a building now. Some have left the faith. Some do not believe in God anymore. I'm not saying you do, don't. But there is people, even from what I understood, is saying they don't believe anymore. What shall separate us from the love of God? Not that. Not that. Paul. God got ready for him. He met him on the road. First thing out of Paul's mouth. Lord, what would thou have me to do? Ask God that. Ask God, Lord, what would you have me to do? I've been slack. I didn't do. I didn't go. I didn't say. God is not like us. He'll forgive you. You're repenting. We, we are repenting and asking God, if I may, for another chance to do What he want us to do. What he call you to do. So I just thank you for listening this morning to, to what we have had to say. On Thursday night we have a beautiful Bible study. I just sit and listen and enjoy. Older saints it will help you. It helps me. I be inspired. I I I I I be joyful to hear the 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 class respond and talk. Monday night at eight o'clock we have corporate prayer. Repent, repent, and and ask God to to help you be a part of what's going on. Let me tell you something. You can't make it by yourself. You just can't make it by yourself. You'll find yourself in sin. Practicing sin. You can't make it by yourself. You need somebody to talk to. Sometimes. In these times, you need somebody to talk to. You need somebody you can trust to talk to and maybe tell some of your deep, dark secrets or the thing that's bothering you. These are the times God's grace is sufficient. His grace is sufficient, saints. His grace is sufficient. No, we're going to go through some things. We're going to find out our weakness. We're going to find out some things about ourselves. And then sometimes if you talk to certain people, they'll come out and you'll feel free Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just ask you to touch us today. Lead and guide us. Show us the way. Lord, we need you. We cannot do without you. Help us through these times. For we know it's your grace. It was your grace in the beginning. It's your grace now. Help us. All doubts and fears. Fear is a terrible thing. 
will stop you in your tracks. Stop you right in your tracks. Don't let it come against you. Ask God to help you. Keep going. We want to do communion. I'm going to give you a minute to get yours. I'm going to serve Ella Ross right here. I want you to get yours. This morning. Thank you for listening. And if you need help. If you want to talk to somebody. Elder Ross is here and I am here. You know our phone number. You can text us. What you say to us. Is supposed to be private. But it takes trust to tell people the truth. But once you can tell somebody what's bothering you, it helps you. It'll keep you going. Confession is good for the soul, I'm telling you. Amen. Good for the soul. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for your blood. Thank you for your body. So we just lift our hands to you this morning and say thank you. Thank you for all things. Thank you for what you're doing. <clears throat> Lord, we do thank you for your blood. And when he had given thanks, he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do a remembrance of me. Not because you're good now. Not because you're perfect. But do it in remembrance of him dying on that cross for us, giving his life for us, being raised from the dead by God. And now he's with the Father, making intercessions for us. Isn't that great? Lord, we thank you for that. Take it, eat all of it. Mmm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. After the same matter also, he took the cup. When he had some sin, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often ye drank it in remembrance of me. Lord, we do this in remembrance of you, and we thank you. Drank ye all of it. Amen. 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 And we do thank you for listening. Thank you for coming to church today. <laughs> Amen. I feel better. So much better. Since I laid my, my burdens down. Burdens down, Lord. Burdens down, Lord. Since I laid my burdens down, lay them down. <laughs> lay them down. Lay them down. Amen. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. I am right now. I am encouraged. But be encouraged. For the Lord thy God is with thee. Lord, we do thank you for allowing us to come together. And we bless you as you have blessed us. And keep us as we go forward. Let us all go to Revelation and read that letter to the Ephesian church. We thank you now and we bless you in Jesus' name. Every heart say, Amen, Amen, Amen. Mm -hmm.
Can you read it, buddy? Just read it. Just like in, in the video, it says. Over there in the video. This is my technician. I need a technician. <laughs> I'm going to put these big red letters there.